So let's start up. Uh, let's, let's create a new workload profile with the name AUS EFT Rolls. Okay. So uh, in this, uh, like we will be having three items like uh, vacation, sick, and maternity leave. I uh, will change this to another one. emergency okay so let's say this policy an employee is eligible uh, to get uh, how much uh, how many days two days 16 hours per month okay and sick is like he'll be getting Mm, total 10 days, 96 hours in a year. And emergency leave is like, uh, he'll be having 24 hours per year. We we can uh, um, make the policy as the day wise as well, right? Yeah, day wise as well we can give, but most of them will be having it day wise. Either it will be pay period basis, monthly or year basis in Chronos. Okay. 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 Even if it is day basis, they will just convert it into monthly basis average on average how much they should be adding. In that okay, mm, and then okay, this vacation, uh, this employee can carry up to uh, 16 hours per month, means uh, to the next year, he can carry up to 40 hours. Okay. Understood. That means if the year and if he has more, uh, he has not taken all the holidays, uh, he can carry forward up to 40 hours. Whatever is there, if he is having more than 40 hours balance in his uh, thing, only 40 will be carried forward, that will be discarded. Clear on that requirement? Yeah. Yeah. So, sick, there is no carry forward. No carry over and emergency also, it's no carry over. Now let's start building the policy. So we already have accrual codes for vacation and sick. We have built it to the name ABC. Vacation and ABC. We have two codes here. We don't have a code for emergency. So let's build a code. Or we can what we can do is we can directly duplicate this. Click it and click on duplicate. And we taste change it to emergency. I can mention so clear on what I'm doing. Yeah. 
uh, if you if both are on the system you can follow up and create a policy so usually how it goes like when i'm building a policy the previous sessions like they'll be just following up and they'll be uh, starting the policy fine just uh, like note this what i'm doing and build the whatever i have completed build it by tomorrow okay only then you'll get an okay. idea so okay. after this okay. session there like will not be any communication to discuss the doubts so try to work right. out on that So I have created emergency vacation also. So three accrual codes have been created. When you create, create it in like I'm using ABC as a prefix because I'm going to use it in my policy. So for when you are creating, create it under some other prefix and then emergency or vacation or whatever it is. Okay, so the okay. it will not allow same name. Okay. So cruel codes done. Mm. Avi, is it possible to have an um, synchronization between accruals and as well as the policy as uh, I woke up like the one requirement in my previous organization? Uh, like, the, if, uh, suppose if there is an employee, ex employee, okay. uh, if he comes late for uh, uh, six times in a month, so instead of imposing a uh, loss of pay, uh, he'll be losing an one. Uh, any of the accrual? Well, Which like kind of... uh, we can flag him, but the manager needs to do it. Out, uh, but I think uh, like we can do it. There is a way, but it will be a complex policy. We can hmm. do it. There is a, there is way in front of there is something called duration record. Using that, hmm. we can do it, but it will take uh, like uh, how to say it will take. It's like uh, it, we need to connect a few other modules into it, and we cannot exactly say that after these hours, this money should go. It will automatically take whatever the hours he is losing under this break for. Even okay. if it is five okay. minutes or ten minutes, mm -hmm. like that. Okay. Mm -hmm. So we have three codes created. Then. Uh, now we are uh, going to see the dates, whether we have all dates. So we know this is getting credited yearly, like monthly. So for this also, we can use the date Jan 1st itself. Because it is also a start of month. It is also a start of year as well as it's a start of month also. So we can use Jan 1st as a reference. Sick also, it is uh granting yearly so for far that also that first is okay and emergency also jan first is okay but if an employee is hired on the mid of the year they need to have some hours right yeah the system should calculate and prorate of this right yeah so there the like for that we have an option so a vacation is hourly like a monthly basis right so uh this is fine. If an employee is hired in the mid of the year, from next year start, he will get 16 hours. That's fine. So here we no need proration. No proration needed. Because if he is hired on the mid of the year, maybe like in another 15 days, he is going to get his 16 hours. Start of the month, we are giving him 16 hours. So that's fine. But in sick, we need proration.
okay and emergency case emergency leave there is no proration whatever the time he is hired he is going to lose it anyway even if is so emergency is for emergency purpose he should be able to use it irrespective of what month he is hired in you are getting me why i am telling for that vacation doesn't need proration clear on this uh, kiran because it's monthly we are giving going to give him monthly each month uh, what do you mean to say like uh, if any employee join mid of the uh, year so such employees is not eligible for the vacation this right no they will get because i am giving it monthly basis mm, 16 hours per month okay, okay okay so they will get That's it monthly it. what if so somebody like is going to be calculated uh, automatically uh, considering the date of joining on basis or how uh, on based of uh, joining list so uh, like see okay. this is uh, going to provide him on jan first of every year but this is not like for hmm. every month he is going to get 16 on the first okay. month okay. Okay. okay so okay. proration yeah. is if he, let me write if, if he join on in, in Yeah, if you join on June or July, uh, based on uh, whatever the quota, uh, the no, quota is eligible, right? No, he is eligible for sixteen hours per month, uh, correct? So, mm -hmm. example, he is joining on April fifteenth, means May first he will get sixteen hours, then June first he will get sixteen hours. It's like that only. Okay, okay. okay. So we are okay. yeah, granting him monthly two days per month. Mm -hmm. So even if he is higher than that, yeah, if he is a bit of the year or like any bit of any month, at the end of the month he is going to get a uh, sixteen hours. So no problem. Yeah. But this is not uh, like that. This is only once in a year we are giving him ninety six hours, and that is only on Jan first. So for that, for the first year, if he is higher than a bit of the year, we need to prorate based on higher date only once. Okay. So first, let's work on the vacation. Vacation alone, and we'll build the policy. We'll test it out. If it works fine, then we'll start with the sick and emergency. Okay. Let's okay. start. Let's start with the pro uh, this one. Okay. Now let me go. We have created a date, and so now I need to create a date pattern for Jan first. Let me see if there is any available pattern. Okay, there is a pattern first of each month. let me open it up okay what this does is it is referencing jan first as the date and it is uh, rotating prorating it like rotate like uh, frequencies monthly once it is providing the grant so let's choose this as our date pattern because vacation for us is uh, like a monthly basis so i choose this as the date pattern first of each month it will it will rotate it for first of each month so now day pattern is also sorted out next item we need to go and see is grant grant is like it will it is the portion which will provide the uh, hours to the employee so let me open i need to click on i'll go with a new one new I'll give a name of A B C. Okay, and this is going to repeat for each month, right? So you should choose repeatedly, not one time. We are going to repeat it yearly, and we are going to choose the date pattern is first of each month. Each month we are going to repeat it. and uh, it's asking whether it will expire we are not expiring anything it's like after uh, if you are granting 16 hours does it need to expire if he is not taking any leave after 2 months 3 months this is specifically for comp off type of leaves so when we work on a public holiday we get a comp off and you need to take it within next 2 months or 1 months but uh, like if not it will expire so you don't need to change anything else just to, you know to click on does not expire and this one we are going to use it repeatedly each month we need to get a grant so it's not one time we are going to give repeated date pattern should be first of each month this should always be fixed it's not yanned we are not granting him some balance based on uh, like how many hours he is working we are this is fixed one we are going to give him fixed so fixed date pattern 
here repeatedly and does not expire. That's it. Other options, whatever the system has chosen is default. Here, currently, we are not doing any proration. If you want to prorate, this is the area we are prorating. For vacation, if you see our requirement, we are not prorating anything. Only when we are doing it for sick, we will click on here based on higher date. So that system will automatically prorate. So where do we put uh, 16 hours? That's, that comes in the next part. We are here, we are just oh. creating the grant. Okay. I'll create the grant. Uh, in few cases, like uh, after uh, each uh, every organization, they have their own probation period, right? Suppose if an employee completion of first six months, uh, uh, before six months in the probation period, there might be some uh, approvals they are providing. After finishing of six months, uh, the regular approvals will be eligible. So how can we uh, configure that? Is there any... Probation period is here. If you apply probation period here, until probation period, he will approve the accruals, but he will not be able to use it. Mm -hmm. He will not be able to take leaves. So okay. based on the years, we can provide different set of accruals that is there. First, let's complete mm -hmm. the simple policy, then we'll go to that. Okay. Okay. So this vacation grant is done. Now, once you have completed grant, here, uh, I'm going to create a limit because we are going to limit the employee to only 40 hours carry over on new year. So, uh, already let me see if there is any limit. Okay, there is a carry over limit. I need to see if there is a carry over limit for Jan. Not sure, so I'll create one. Okay. Jan 1, can your limit is already there, but we'll create a new one. It looks like it's different. So, limit, what we are going to do here is there will be Five, six limits. The limit which we are going to use is carry over limit. So what carry over limit means, how many hours an employee can carry over after a specific date. And here, these two items currently we know it because adding balance limit is like, we are providing 16 hours per month. So assume the accruals to be a bucket. How much it can hold maximum? Even though if he is adding 16 hours and we are carry forwarding 40 hours every year. So at the max, how much the employee can hold? Uh, 200 hours or 250 hours? What is the maximum storage he can have on his leave? That is what adding balance limit is about. Any doubts in this, what adding balance limit is? No. no. So it's like, say, first year, uh, Jan first is getting a 16 uh, one, one minutes. At the year end, he'll be having around... Uh, maybe 160 plus uh, 32, 182 hours, okay? So if he's not taking anything, okay, uh, he, he hasn't taken any leave, then next year, yeah, but it will reduce it to 40. Then again, next year, he will get another 182. Okay, next year also, he's not taking any leave. This will go, uh, again, he will carry forward 40. So this, if you see here, this adds up to, uh, maybe around uh, 40 plus, uh, this is two. So these many hours are there. So if we have a adding balance limit, which states only 200 hours means, even though if he's carry forwarding 40, it will like once the total balance reaches 200, he will not occur anything. That is what adding balance limit is about. It's like a bucket. Once it is filled, whatever the policy says, whatever the grant says, I'm going to give him eight hours, I'm going to give him 50 hours. 
nothing will work once the like top of that bucket is reached whatever you put it will over over that's it that is about the anning balance limit anning amount limit is slightly different from that amount limit is like uh, if you choose a particular date range in that trade range how much he can add it's not like the total uh, uh, balance or like total uh, capacity uh, like earning balance limit is like like a uh, total this is the like total capacity of the particular accrual bucket but earning amount limit is it is slightly different what it does is it's like total has that can be earned in a particular time period uh say example from 1st of january to uh, like 6th of january i'm defining a policy that whatever the rule says he should be uh, having a, a maximum earning amount limit of 70 hours means in that particular time frame he should be like even though what are the grants is he will be able to earn only 70 hours it's not the total capacity even though he has total capacity of 200 or something if i am defining that within this 3 months you said right up uh, you said a requirement right kiran first 6 months he should be adding only little less right if, an, if there is a new hire kiran is that like if there is a new hire the first 6 months he is in probation he will give him a different accruals that's what you said right yeah so that in that cases we can use earning amount limit and say like first uh, from the higher date to this date okay from the higher date to 6 months some day, like date of us he should be maximum capable of earning this many hours that's it so whatever the policy gives him or whatever the total value is that that will not matter how much he can earn within that time only that amount he can earn and one more thing is earning amount limit cannot be greater than earning balance limit like i said here 70 hours we can uh, he should be earning at the first 6 months of probation system will allow any, not anything beyond that only up to 70 it will allow but say we are creating a earning amount limit setting first 6 months he can earn up to 220 means it will not allow because we have defined that it's a, the maximum capacity itself 200 so it this cannot bypass earning balance limit Manning balance limit gets the first priority because it's the total capacity. Confused? No, um, it's just a vacation, right? Let's say um, 16 hours per month. But if somebody starts and then before probation, let's say they they get fired or don't work there anymore, so they don't get to cash out even though it's fixed right because it's not by proration it's by no. fixed rule cashing out is not based on the actual policy cashing out is based on purely on the company's policy some companies will ask the employees to take a few leaves when they are on the period some like uh, uh, moving the accruals to payroll is a different process that hr does are based on what during termination the integration fetches and pays them out whatever the balance okay. they have okay so that is not directly done from here we are having a privilege inside this to do a payout on based on a certain date range but during termination it's done through the integration so that it ensures whatever is having is wiped out as well as it is right. paid out to the employee in his last paycheck good good we have uh, like uh, for our policy we are creating a carryover limit uh, 
and it's a uh, Jan first carry off. Okay. It's yearly. It will repeat for every year. So date pattern here again is we are referring to first gen, first yearly. Because we need to repeat it yearly. There is another mm -hmm. pattern. January first year, you'll go with that. Okay, that's it. And this is nothing to do. Like uh, we will go with the maximum itself. Uh, this is uh, like this is used like sometimes some companies will allow the employees to go negative on their vacation balances because they will be earning next month also, right? Here, if you say uh, like we are giving him sixteen hours per month, so if an employee is hired and in another six months he needs a vacation for two whole weeks, he will not have that sufficient balance. But we can say he can take negative and then when the next month he is getting another 16, it will adjust to the value. Okay, so in that case, if we have to apply a carry or limit, it is asking whether we need to uh, carry forward how like the maximum amount he has or we can carry forward and forgive the negative balance. That means it will on the year, even if he is having minus 5 hours, minus 6 hours, it will make him to zero. That we will not be doing it mostly. We will just go with the normal. Whatever he has, that will be transferred to next year. If it is less than zero. If it is more than zero, up to 40, we can transfer. That's it. So let me save this. So oh, we are creating it. We have saved it. Carry over limit, limit and grants is done. Now we need to create a cruel policy for it. We'll start with this simple one. Once we configure this, it can we have this whole week for accruals along. So we'll complete the vacation today. Let's test it out. Tomorrow we'll configure the emergency and sick. Then we will work on the other requirements like whatever uh, Kiran suggested, right? How we are doing it, how it is possible. Mm -hmm. I'll give you the overview. Okay, so now in the accrual policy, there are already some policies which I have created. So we'll create in a new name. Uh, say we'll create a accrual policy. Newly, I'll give that first, I'll give the name as AES FT. This is for vacation. And first, I need to choose what is my accrual code. My accrual code is ABC vacation. I have chosen here, right? The same thing, ABC vacation. Now I need to choose it last whether I have a probation period or not. No, currently we are not going with anything. Okay. And uh, now I'll just directly length of service references like after crossing certain years, he might be able to uh, like accrue more hours. Like now it is 16 minutes, maybe after 10 years. We will give him 24 hours per month. So we do like, uh, do we have anything right now? It's right now, no. We will go into that, the later configuration. These, everything is nothing. Now I need to choose our grant and this. So our grant name is, what is our grant name? ABC vacation. Okay. And here, I need to, here only I am going to put the amount 60. That's it. No, nothing else to change. Does it expire? No, we are not going to expire it for anything. Do we have any grant rule, round rule? No, we are not going to round it. Round rule means like some companies will be having, uh, like say per week, he will be earning 4.617. Uh, like they will divide the, as you said Kiran, before, they will divide the accruals based on pays and then they will provide to them. In that case, it will come like 3.1432. It will go on up to five to six decimal. In that case, how to round it? Do we need to round it based on one digit, two digit, or uh, like just the whole number? For that purpose only, we have this round rule. I'll give a high, like a highlight on that. But round rule, right now we are not using it. Uh, we are like, if you want to, uh, how uh, like we do in our policies, right? We won't go for round rule. What we will do is we know the value. We will round it off. If needed, we will round it out to here itself. 
if it's going for five digits, so it's sixteen point seven one three four five means we will round it to sixteen point seven one or sixteen point seven two. How we need it? While creating the polish itself, we will round it off. That's it. We don't need a separate uh, rule to be created for that because this accepts up to two digits, so we can do it. So currently, I'm going with the sixteen. Now we need to create a uh, see our limit. Our limit name is Jan first carry or yearly. Here it is. Here I am to give how many hours he can carry forward. What? Okay. Now here I need to choose. The pay codes which we created in approval policy. Rather, uh, like you know, we have created ABC vacation here. This is our accrual. So to take this particular accrual, employee needs to put some pay code in his time card. You see here. There is three or four ways of taking vacation. One, some like employee will be submitting the time of request. Second, the manager will be going in and putting the pay code. Third, or the some companies employee itself will have a privilege to choose the pay. So to take a particular vacation, here if you see there will be a number of leave codes. These are not accrual codes. These are the uh, pay codes which we create in pay policies, and then we will map it to accrual. If you see here, you can see uh, like there will be vacations. Oh, yeah, okay. there will be vacation pay codes available here. There are n number of vacation pay codes. What we need to do is we need to first create a vacation pay code and then we will map it to this. Because we can take only by applying this pay code in this time card or by requesting time of using the pay codes in the pay policies. So taking here we will have the list of all the pay codes which, which are available in pay policy. We need to choose the pay code which we will be using. Okay, so let's find a suitable pay code which we can map to. Usually it will be there on the system because when we did is also we like we created a couple of pay codes. So let me see what pay code I can use it for this. Uh, here we have an uh, employee and uh, we are arranging the code. Like suppose if we have another 10,000 employees or 20,000 employees working in the, in the world wide. Uh, yeah. Like different companies, uh, different countries having their own kind of accrual. So how okay. can we, it's, it's an, uh, a bit, uh, a lengthy process, right? So it's not employee based, right? It is, it is based on the policy. So if you have five sub, yeah. sub operating companies, five companies will have five different policies. We'll create different five Ooh. different profiles for them. Okay. Based so on what if you go with the country wise kind of things or how? Uh, it depends. Uh, it depends entirely on the organization. Say, if uh, two uh -huh. sub companies are having similar accruals, mm -hmm. but that's not possible. Mostly they will have something different. At least they will have a say there will be some COVID leave or some emergency vacation which will be different from the existing company. We can standardize it. Uh, it, okay. it can rest with the parent company and the sub companies if they agree. If they have different policies, we need to create different policies. I have worked in projects where there will be around 50, 60 uh, accrual profiles based on the full time will have a different policy. The part time will have a different policy. Interns, they don't have any leaves. And then uh, there will be people who are working as white collar job in the same organization. They will have a different yeah. accrual policy. Salary. Salary people accrual yeah. policy. Hardly full time will be different. Hardly part time will be different. Even if they belong to same location and same uh, uh, like uh, organization. And same in yeah. California entirely whatever the business yeah. they do, their policy will be different from all the other states. Mm. So it's based on that only. We are like, what? How many? Even if it is sixty policy, we are going to create it one time uh, during the yeah. implementation. We will get the requirement. We will create it and close it out. Once that is done, our mapping everything will happen through integration. And when the employee switches from one area to other, uh, the HRs will be that particular location. HR will be having the list what payroll should be assigned. 
they will make the changes in the uh, like employee central or hrc wherever they uh, give the feed to e time they will make the changes here and it auto will automatically close here so let me pick up pay code usually it will be uh, when we are they uh, are using the vacation accrual is a pay code name also will be vacation it's a simple normal pay code just for taking we need a pay code from this one so we'll go the standard one vacation i just need to check whether it's the suitable code because it's standard and the multiplier is one so that's what we need just a standard pay code and the unit is r and it is giving a multiplier of 1 so this pay code is eligible for our vacation so here i'll choose okay if employee chooses this pay code then it will detect the ask from vacation and pay him out and now i need here i need to define what is the minimum taking and what is the increment so minimum taking is like whether he is eligible to take for a half day of vacation or other like uh, he is eligible to take a uh, two hours of vacation that depends on us right now we will keep it as four as the minimum increment we are not going to give you uh, like ask him to take a vacation based on hours either it's half day or full day that's it and taking increment also i will give it as four that means if i give this and this the employee will be able to take leaves uh, example minimum he will be able to take leaves taking increment four means he can take a full day leave 4 plus 4 which is equal to 8 or he can take one and half day leaves like 4 plus 4 plus 4 this is how it works minimum uh, taking plus taking increment till uh, how many leaves we need based on that it will we can increment uh, by 4 so we can take 4 hours of vacation we can take 8 we can take 12 we can take 16 we can take 20 like that it will go so for two days means he can apply for a increment of 16 the system will accept it so clear on these two items yeah so minimum taking is out of 16 uh, he can take four no minimum taking is like how much minimum hours he can apply he cannot apply for one hour of vacation he can apply for half day oh, or yeah, full yeah yeah sorry yeah sorry yeah, yeah. yes restore taking you will not be using it it's like uh when an employee takes he will nullify it again if the amount is something less so we are not using it and then we here also we have a maximum taking limit which we will not be utilizing it because we will handle it through normal limits like here we have the limits whatever we created the uh, limits so there's a limit type called taking limit we can use it here and state it like Uh, for a particular year he can take only these many hours so we can give a warning on so when he reaches some hour and from after that we can disallow so here we are not using it but here this one we can use it like uh past or present overdraft warning we can give if you want to the employee not to go negative we can choose zero here so he will not be able to go below zero both for present leaves and future leaves because usually we will apply for future also i can apply leave for today or yesterday which i am already absent or for one month in pre year like one month in like uh, later for december i can apply so in that case also we can use this condition so that if the balance is uh, uh, like going beyond zero we can disallow it warning is uh, nothing it will allow it it will just pop up a warning stating that your balance is going low that's it so clear on this it will not allow the employee to go below zero balances if you remove this and give minus 10 means up to minus 10 employee can take so clear on this we have given for name and we have choose what vacation it is we have chosen our grant given 16 hours to it and then we have chosen our limit we have given 40 to it then we have given what is our pay code which we are going to use for vacation pay code is coming from the pay policies we are going to use vacation as a pay code which will which is uh, like quite understanding for the employees to apply 
So policy is done. Now I'm going to save and return. That's it. Now uh, I have created Arsenal FT vacation. The accrual is based on ABC, the vacation code. Now I'm going to map it to accrual profile so that we can assign it to an employee at the top level. Here we are not going to do nothing. We'll just create the profile with a name. Australian FT, that's it. And I need to choose the policy here, Australia FT vacation, whether it should, should be visible in the uh, like trend card or not visible. Let it be visible. That's it. I'll save it here. And now I'll go to an employee and assign it. Our profile name is Australian FT. I'll assign it to this employee itself, Jane Smith. I'll assign it directly on. He's having Australian FT or IBC FT only. I'm going to change it to Australian FT from start of this year. We need to see whether it is accepting it or not. Because if our employee's time card is already, yeah. He signed up. So if you see here, the uh, employee time card, when we tested it out, we already uh, removed, like uh, uh, put in, we approved it and we signed off it. So only if we remove the sign off, it will allow him to make the changes to that prior date. If you see him, these are the dates which has already grayed out. So while we are testing with this employee, we added punches, we tried to sign it off and we like played with him, right? So now we need to remove the approvals. Only then the system will allow me to uh, go to this back date and put this approval policy. So first I need to click here and remove the sign off. Usually when we are assigning it through integration, integration takes care of it. It will automatically remove the sign off until uh, the date which is mentioned and then it will apply the profile to him. Now I need to do it manually. It will take some time. I need to remove well, like weak places only it will go. Or maybe I'll do one thing. I'll assign it from uh, anyway. I need to assign the policy for others yearly. So let me remove it till first. It goes by week. I need to still remove 16 times. Okay, done. I'll remove once more again. Oh, I can refresh this. Yes. Now, now I can apply changes directly here. I'll choose Australian FT. So from one one, our policy is going to get applied. Now we'll do a quick testing only. Only we have vacation here, right? So we'll run the accrual detail report for him. We can go to report from here or from the time card. Whichever place we want, we can go from there. I'll go to reports. Now we have assigned the policy to the employee. You can see here in the people editor, under the accruals, in the person under the accruals, we have assigned from one month. So now I will run the report under this accruals. Accrual detail. Okay, and the range of dates I'm going to use is I'm going to use it from 1 1 2022 till 1 1 2023 because I need to see whether 
next year he is carry forwarding 40 hours only or not or even we can give maybe uh up to like fourth month or something like that 04 01 02 03 okay i have chosen the employee range of dates pdf pdf is only thing we can see right now so i am running in pdf yeah now if i see my report okay so one one i am getting correct exactly 16 hours so each month if you see here vacation i am getting 16 16 hours for each year okay uh, like each each month and if you see the employee has applied somewhere in 2013 he has applied some vacation so it is removing eight hours that's fine and now if you see on 1 1 2023 uh, like on uh, 12th month he is having 184 vacation okay but again when uh, he goes to new year we have a carry over so it is adjusting the carry over limit and providing him only with 40 hours when he's going to the fresh year so our carry over limit is working our policy is working each month he is getting 16 16 hours clear okay yeah. So our policy is working fine. Whatever we have created for vacation as per the requirement, it is working. And also uh, at a particular point of time, how, much, how many balances he has, we can see it directly in the time card also. But the report will give you the overall picture, how it is getting granted, why he is at the current balance like this. So if you see here, this will give you on the start of this current paper, which is 11 12, how much balance he has. He has 168 balance. Okay. Then at the like the, like this is a actual ending balance is like at the end of this year how many balance he'll be having he'll be having one eighty four clear on this is yeah. a number he's having one sixty eight if you check the report the report also will say uh, that the month of November he is at one sixty eight and this year and how much he will be having if he has not taken any leave if, if he's not going to apply anything right now how much he will be having one eighty four clear. Yep. So that's it for today. Tomorrow we will work on the other vacations. Probably I'll send you this requirement through email. Okay. You can just try to start with what we have created today. Mm -hmm. Okay. So that tomorrow, once we start, we can work together and we can create sick and vacation. So only when you will get some grip, uh, like what we are doing, you'll get some ideas. Okay. Okay.